Today on The Joy of Editing, it's TK Friday, and today it's Mystery in Monochrome. This will be a full black and white edit utilizing the TK8 plugin for Photoshop. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Thank you for joining me again today. Are you ready for some black and white? I know some of you out there have been requesting me to do a black and white edit using the TK8 plugin for Photoshop, and today is that day. By the way, if you don't yet own the TK8 plugin for Photoshop, you can click on my affiliate link found in the description below this video. Just click on that link. It'll take you to the TK web store where you can purchase the TK8 plugin for Photoshop along with training videos. And if you use my promo code DK15, you'll save 15% off your entire purchase. And when you do that, you're supporting the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And for that, I truly thank you. Hey, if you have any images you'd like me to edit on a TK Friday, just go to the description right below this video and click on show more or more to open up that description. Scroll down to the very bottom and you'll find a contact me link. Just click on that contact me and we can discuss using one of your images on a TK Friday. Are you ready to do some black and white editing? Well, I start out here in Lightroom. By the way, this image today comes to us from Robert Colley. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, Robert. Thank you for this image. I really love this image. But this is a perfect candidate for a black and white conversion. So let's get into this. I'm going to do something a little different. I've never done this before, so I'm going to show you something new. There's all kinds of ways that you can do black and white conversions. But I'm going to show you something different, something you may have never thought of doing before. But let's check it out. By the way, as always, I'll have Dropbox links for the image as well as the PDF notes found in the description below the video. And again, remember to open up that description to see all those links, you gotta click on either show more or more to get to them. Now, as always, I start out in Lightroom. So here's the image. I did a crop on it and I'll show you right here. Here is my crop. So I did a square crop on this image. Now this is using a linear profile for a Canon 5D Mark III. Now, here's something that you may not know. If you open up your profiles, okay, and of course you can see the Adobe profiles. Now there's an Adobe monochrome profile. But if you keep scrolling down here, you're going to find your linear profile if you've downloaded the linear profile, um, by the way, for your camera. But if you come here to Legacy and open this up, you're going to see a bunch of black and white profiles in here. But if you go to the very bottom, check it out. Here's a linear Canon EOS 5D Mark III profile. And that's how I started out this edit. So I clicked on this and we'll close this up. And then I clicked on auto and did my typical adjustments here, you know, pulled back on the whites a little bit. So I'm not clipping those whites. Now I didn't do any lens corrections on here because I like the image just the way it was. So I didn't do anything there on under detail. I just have a little bit of basic sharpening on here. No noise reduction. If there's a little grain in a black and white, it really looks good. So, but this was shot at a low ISO of 400. So not a problem anyway. And then at this point, I just sent it into Photoshop. And now here we are in Photoshop, ready to get going. Now, back in Lightroom, I did the black and white conversion utilizing the uh, linear profile for the Canon 5D Mark III. So the black and white conversion is done. And now it's just a matter of editing. And as I said, there's many ways of doing black and white conversions, but this is something a little bit different today. This may not work on all images, but on this image, it worked out really well. I normally start out my images with a balance and contrast adjustment, and I did try that on this one. If you watch my TK Friday videos, you see how I do that every week. And I did try that on this image, but it didn't work out too well, so I had to go and rethink it. And really my editing philosophy is to really study my image and kind of let that image talk to me. You know, it speaks to me and says, this is what I need. So that's the approach I take. More of a troubleshooting approach where after studying the image for a bit, I just start correcting things that need corrected. And before you know it, I have a full finished edit. And then at the end of this edit, I'm going to show you some tips for color toning your image as well as potentials for artistic expression of your black and white image at the very end. So you want to stay and watch the whole edit. To build up some drama, I would like to bring down some of the darker tones. 
And so to do that, we're going to come up and click on the luminosity mask button. And then I went to darks one, clicked on darks one. Okay, that's too broad. I'm going to keep looking for darker dark tones. Darks two, darks three, and now darks four. And I thought darks four is it. This is where I'll start. And I'll output this to a color grading tool. Now I'm going to work with the midtones because it's going to work out and get the tone I want. So I'm going to click on the gray circle. And I pulled mine back to like minus 39, which is right here. And here's the before and here's the after. So you see the drama already starting to build into the image. And now I'm looking back into this area of the image and these are darker tones. So I'm going to try to pull those back. And to do that, let's X out of the color grading tool. Let's go back to luminosity masks. I was at darks four before. Here's darks four. Here's darks five. And here is dark six. See how it's targeting this area back in here and these areas in here. So I'm going to output that to a color grading tool. And this time I'll use the shadows. So let's click on the shadow circle. And I just want to darken that a little bit to like minus 11 right here. I'm not totally crushing these blacks. I don't know if you can see it on your side of the spectrum here, but on mine, I can still see some detail back in here. It's not gone to being crushed. But what I'm trying to do is to get you up into this area here. I don't want you back here so much. This is mysterious back here, and I want to keep it a mystery, but I want you in this area because to me, this image is all about this shadow coming down off this chair here and the shadow on the chair. And the beautiful play of light against shadow is really great. I'll X out of the color grading tool. Now, I'm still working with dark. So this area up in here, I'd like to darken down a little bit. Let's see what range that will be in. So let's click on the luminosity mask button, and here's darks one, darks two. And here's darks three. So right like that. I think that's going to be pretty cool right there. And now let's output this to a color grading tool. I'll use midtones again. So I'll click on the midtone circle. And I brought this back to like a minus 14. Okay, you see that? It's subtle, but check it out. Here's the before and here's the after. So here's my overall before. And now here is my after. But it's just a thinking game here. You really got to think out these edits. What do you want this to look like? And I want a lot of mystery here. After all, I did call this mystery in monochrome. The next thing I want to do is darken down this wall a little bit. To do that, we'll X out of the color grading tool and a zone mask will be good for this. So let's click on the zone mask button. And I'm going to choose a tone like right here and click OK. And don't forget, we have this slider right here. So we can slide this slider, you know, to the left, to the right. And I ended up like at like 35. I thought that was pretty good. And then I did my tightening. And I tightened this to somewhere right about here. You see that right there? Now, I will burn this area down. So we're going to output this to a burn tool. Now, the burn tool, I always tell you this. I'm not going to keep saying this all through the video. But I'll be using the left side, which is a 50% gray layer. The right side's a pixel layer. You can use either side, but I choose the gray side. But do what you like. I'm going to use the gray side. So let's go ahead and do this. Because the, one of the reasons I like to use the gray side is because I can use a gray brush for blending. And it makes it really easy to work with and erasing areas that, that I overdo. So I'll click on this left side. And now I want to use an opacity of my brush at like 30%. So I'll just type my three key. And as you can see, my opacity goes to 30%. I love shortcuts. They really help. And as you can see, there's our 50% gray layer in a soft light blend mode. And then I'm just going to darken. This is a local adjustment. I just want to darken this area down. I'm going to go in between this chair here. Doesn't have to be perfect up here a little bit. Kind of blend it around a little bit. I might hit this another time. Come up in here. And I'm actually painting over this a second time. And I think that looks pretty good. Let's check it out. Here's the before and here's the after. But you see how that just tones it down? And maybe just right here a little bit. Okay, so here's before and here's after. Now, I think I went overboard. I went too strong. So I'm going to take the opacity. And don't worry if you ever overdo things. It's okay. You have opacity. I'm going to take this opacity, slide it the whole way off, and just build it up slowly. And when I get it to the point where I think it looks good, and I think like right there, at 27%, here's before and here's after. So before and after. And maybe just a little bit more. Let's take it up to here, 32. Here's before and here is after. 
I did end up going to 49%. I thought I need a little more. But you know what? I also want to darken some of this right up into here as well. Okay, so one more time before and after. Okay, so now I am happy. Now, after studying the image, I'm looking right in here. I just want to bring the value of these tones down a little bit, like right in this area, right in here. I'm going to use the zone mask again. Now, I still have a selection, but not a problem. When you click on the zone mask button, that selection will go away. And I want to find a tone that I want to darken, like right here. Click OK. And now we can make some adjustments here. Now, right now, you can see this is at a 28, which is right around a zone one. And I'm going to slide this slider to the right and try to target that a little bit better. And I think like right here at 46 gets it pretty well. Now, I want to really tighten this up and I'm going to tighten it up into about here. So I'm just looking at like these areas right in here. And I'll, I'll put that to another uh, burn layer. So I'll click the left side again. And now we'll make the adjustment. Uh, now I'll still use 30%. And what I want to do is just, again, bring this value down. Staying away from here because some light's coming through here. Maybe over here a little bit more. Let's take a look. Here's the before and here is the after. But see how that just tones that down a little bit. I'm going to go to 10%. I'm typing my one key and I'll just hit this one more time across here. I haven't lifted my brush. That puts like 10%. It's really not another 10% on top of that. It's incrementally more though. Here's before and here's after. So I like that. Now I still have my selection as you can see by the selection indicator, but there's some light right here and a little bit of a spotlighting effect back in here. I just like to bring this up in value a little bit. To do that I can dodge, but here's a little tip for you. I have my selection so I can come down to the combo panel or the CX panel, whichever you prefer, and you want to grab the dodge tool. And again, I'm going to use the 50% gray side. So I'm going to click on that. This time I'll use an opacity of 10%. And what I want to do is just paint some light across here and back in this area, back in here, like so. Here's the before and here is the after. See that little bit of light in there? Now, if it's too strong, we can go ahead and pull back on this opacity a little bit. Again, I like to do things tastefully in my edits, okay? So I don't like to overdo. So here's before and here's after. And by the way, this is a good time to point out, this is my interpretation of this image. We're all different. You're an artist. I'm an artist. You know, we have different ways of seeing things. So you do your way. I'm doing my way. You don't have to follow me 100%. But I'm just giving you some guidelines, some knowledge and how to use these different tools and different ways of using them. And there's more than one way of doing things in Photoshop. So I'm showing you my way, but you may have another way, but use your way if you like your way better. Now, if you want to blend this a little bit, you can go and grab your gray brush and I'm going to like 10%. I'll type my one key and that changes to 10% and I can just kind of blend the edge here a little bit back in here. Okay. So the gray brush is really good for doing that kind of stuff. All right, I'm liking it so far. Now I'm looking at these shadows here, mainly from the chair here. These shadows, these long lines are from the uh, window pane, I believe. But I'm mainly interested right now in the shadow area right here. So let's try to find that zone. I'm going to use the zone mask again. So click on the zone mask button. And I'm going to click like right here and click OK. Now we can adjust this. Now I'm at 48. I'm going to drag this to the right and see if I can tighten that up a little bit, get a little better selection. I'm going to go to like 53. And now I'll really tighten this up to somewhere like this. See how I can really target that right there. And now we're going to use another burn tool. So I'll click the left side. We'll output to the burn tool. And now I'll go to 50%. I'm going to type my five key and you'll see that goes to 50%. And I'll make my brush a little smaller. By the way, I'm using always a very soft edge brush, okay? And now I'll just go over these shadows like here, up in here a little bit, down in here. Let's take a look. Here's the before and here's the after. Now, I overspilled here a little bit, so I'm going to get my gray brush, click on the gray brush, and at like maybe 20% opacity, I'll just paint off of that right there. Here's the before and here is the after. And now what I'll do is take this opacity the whole way off and then just adjust that shadow the way 
I like it. As soon as my eye says, stop, Dave, I'll say, all right, I hear you, man. There you go. And now from the window pane, I'd like to bring these shadows up a little bit. So let's target those. Let's grab another zone mask. So click on the zone mask button. Let's target like right about here. Click OK. And now let's do some adjusting. Okay, so right now I'm sitting between zone three and four. I'm going to bring this to the left to like 80 right there. And I like the way that's targeting. And now we'll tighten it up a bit. I'm going to bring this over to somewhere right about here. And that really gets those. And now, again, another burn tool. Let's do 30%. I'll type my three key. And now I can just paint these shadows. Okay. And here. And back up in here a little bit. Okay, maybe over in here. No, I'm just going to do Command-Z. I didn't like what I did right there. Let's take a look. Here is the before and here's the after. So it just builds that up. And again, if I overdid down here, I can grab my gray brush at 10%, type my one key, and just paint off of that right there. Right like so. Again, before and after. And back here, I, well, let's take a look. Before I'm looking back here. I got a little bit back in there. Here's after. Let me go ahead and with that gray brush, just paint that off a little bit. Now let's take a look. Here's before and here is after. Let's look at the overall before and after. Here's the overall before and here's the overall after. I'm liking it so far. The next thing I want to do is increase the overall contrast in the image. Now right now I have a selection, so I'm going to click this button on the combo panel to deselect my selection. I'm going to grab a Curves Adjustment Layer, and I'll use a preset. Right now we're on Default, and I believe these are in everybody's Photoshop, and these presets here, I'm going to use a Strong Contrast. Now, that's way too strong, wouldn't you say? So I'm going to take this and take it off and build it up slowly. And I ended up liking mine right at like 60, which is right here. Now it got really dark back in here. So we can take care of that with a gradient, a linear gradient. So let's grab our gradient tool, which is right here. And we can click the drop down here. And I'm going to select this one black to white. And what I'll do is draw a gradient from here down to somewhere right around in here. And then we can graduate this like this down into this area here because that'll get way too dark. Let's take a look. Here's the before and here's the after. But I like that extra drama that I'm getting in here. But I'm protecting this area back in here. And again, if you think it's too strong, you can pull back in here. Again, this is your artistic expression. So I'm going to keep mine. Well, let's go. Let's go to 54. Now, if you don't want to see this line here, if you click on this icon for the curve, that'll go away. And you can see here's the before. And here's the after. So a little bit more contrast. And I think that really adds to the mystery. But now we can see the light areas are a little lighter and the dark areas are a little bit darker. But again, I'm trying to keep you in this zone right in here because this is where this image is all happening right here with the shadows and light. And by the way, if you need to readjust your gradient, right now I have the move tool on. But click on the gradient tool again and click on the mask. And you can see your gradient, so you can make some adjustments here if you need to. Just wanted to point that out. And also, by the way, I also wanted to say that I'm using this first icon. I clicked on that. That's for the linear gradient. So make sure you have the linear gradient turned on. And now I'll just click on this icon again, and we can see the image without that line. All right, now this shadow on the chair seat, I'd like to bring it up a little bit. So what do you think? Zone mask? Yeah, you're right. Click on the Zone Mask button. Let's click on right here, this tone to target it. Click OK. And I'm going to adjust this slider to the right a little bit to like 90. And now I'll tighten it to somewhere right about here. I'll put that to a Burn Tool left side for the 50% gray layer. 30% brush, type my 3 key and just paint that shadow up a little bit. OK. So here is the before and here's the after. And then again, I'll take the opacity off the whole way and just build it up slowly and stop where I think it looks about right for the image. And right about there at 65, I think is good. 
Here's the before and here's the after. The next thing I want to do is do a little freehand vignette just in this area, like right up in and around here. We don't need it back here. So I have a selection here. I need to deselect it. So click this button on the combo panel, get a curves adjustment layer, a black mask, click the black mask icon button, and we're going to change the blend mode to multiply for darkening. I'm going to get a nice big um, white brush. So click in the white brush and I'm going to make it pretty large here. And I showed you this in my last tutorial where what I'm going to do is just click this on. Okay. Nice soft edge brush, 10% opacity. Right now I'm at 30. I'm going to type my one key and then I'm just going to add a vignette. Now you can click several times. Like I clicked twice there down in here. I'm going to click around the edges in here like that and up into here, just, you know, clicking around and adding a vignette, maybe couple clicks down over in here up in here over in here how about up in here two clicks there another click there here a click there a click and even up here everywhere a click so here is the before and here's the after just a little freehand vignette very simple and easy the next thing i want to do is bring out some texture in this area right here not the entire image because texture and black and white is a marriage made in heaven so we're going to pop out some really beautiful texture. And I will use the camera raw filter to do that. Now, right now you'll notice I have the mask selected. So if I click ACR right now, that'll take this mask into the camera raw filter. I don't want that. So click on the curves icon and now click on ACR and that'll take the image in. It stamps the image together and it brings it into camera raw. And then I'm going to take my texture adjustment and bump this to the right a good bit. In fact, I'm going to take it over to like 90%, which is right here. And then add a little bit of clarity, not too much, like 10, 10% and click OK. Again, it's going over the entire image. So what I want to do is put a black mask on this layer. So click this button right here and there's my black mask and then get a white brush and a pretty decent sized brush like I have here. And I want to make sure I have 100% opacity, which I do. If you don't have 100% opacity, type zero. And then what we'll do is just paint on texture just like this, only on the areas where we want texture. Okay, so right around in here like this up on this wall over the window here up into here just a little bit back in here and i like it let's take a look here is the before and here is the after again the before and the after and i like it if it's too strong you can back it off here but i like it at 100 percent and now I need to do a little bit of cleanup because I don't know if you can see here, there's like a little white dot here, probably like a dead pixel here and here and some little areas here. So what I'll do is put a blank pixel there right above here. And you can click this icon on the combo panel and there's your blank pixel there and grab the remove tool, the new remove tool, which is really great. And I have mine set for sample all layers and remove after each stroke. So I'm just going to take the remove tool and just paint over some of these areas that I don't like. Like I don't like this right here or this one right here, maybe this over here, uh, like right here. And you know, anything you don't like, paint it off. Okay, this right here I don't like so much and I don't know. And then see these light areas here, probably some uh, spider webs or something. I like this web right here, but these little light dots, I don't like. So I'm going to get rid of those. I'm just going to touch that and that'll go right away. Just like magic and see this thing here. I don't like it and I don't like it. So you can't stay on my scene. So there you go. That is gone. And, but you get the idea. Anything you don't like, just paint over with that remove tool and here's another one right here I don't like and right here in my shadow get out of my shadow okay there we go oh there's one more back here I don't like this guy right here or this one right here so they are gone here's one here I know I'm going crazy here once you start doing this you're gonna do this for a while because you'll keep seeing things that you don't like and here's another one and here's another one okay I'm done I'm stopping
Now, the next thing I want to do is check for a shadow and highlight clipping. So what I'll do is add a color grading tool. So click on the color grading tool and there it is right there. And then we're going to click on this button on the combo panel. You also find it on the CX panel too. For Look for that icon, click it, and that puts a live clipping layer. And you can see the blue areas are clipped shadows and the red areas are clipped highlights. And now we're going to make the color grading tool active. And check this out. This is a great tool for getting rid of clipping. So I'm going to click on my shadows. And all I'm going to do is drag this slider one step to the right. This B right now equals zero. I'm going to make it equal one. And the clipping is gone. You see that? And now I'll click on white, the white circle. And this time I'll move it to the left one increment right there, minus one, and that clipping is gone. Now we don't need the live clipping layer anymore, so we can just click on that same button again and that clipping layer goes away. And that's basically my edit. Now here is the before and here is the after. Now next up are some tips on toning your image, color toning your image, and also how to get some nice global contrast out of your image where you can adjust it to taste for your artistic vision. Lighter, darker, more contrasty, give it a faded look. So think some artistic expression here coming up next. Okay, so let me start out with, uh, say for instance, you want a more faded look. What we'll do is add another color grading tool. I'm just going to click the plus on the color grading tool. And what you could do here is let's click on the shadow black circle. And if you want to get a more faded look, you could take this slider and drag it to the right. You know, you might want that more faded look so you can get that here. Or you may want to even darken down the dark tones even more. So we could take this to the left and say go right around like something like here to really darken up the dark tones or even get it really more moody go a lot more to the left and this gets all black up in here and that's okay too if you want if that's your vision you want that really dark and really moody that could be nice let me go ahead and right click this and reset that and then you could work with your highlights so let me click on the highlight circle and now we could take the highlights and pull these back to so somewhere like maybe like here like a minus 13 and really pull back on those highlights and this is a good little tip if you want to make a print and you want to make sure that you get ink on your paper in the highlights. You may want to pull those highlights back some just so ink will get down. Because if, if you don't get ink on the highlights, it doesn't look right on the paper. You'll notice that. So that's a little tip for you. Let me go ahead and right click this and reset it. And then you can work with your midtones. And then we can maybe open up the midtones a little bit like so. Or we can darken down the midtones like this and get a little more mood and drama into the image. I'm going to go ahead and right click and reset that. Or you could work with midtones, shadows, and highlights as well. And that's a good way to finish off the edit. Just kind of get it right where you want it to be. You know, darker, lighter, faded, whatever you're looking for. Now let's look at color toning the image. Now say for instance I wanted to um, give this a little bit of sepia tone. And midtones is a really good place to do that. Right now I do have midtones selected. So watch, I can add just a little bit of like a yellowish red right here and add like a little bit of sepia. If that's too much, we can come back here and click right here and get a nice subtle sepia tone. That is really nice. Or of course, you know, you could go with other colors. Like you might want like a little bit of green in there. Or that's too much probably. And it's good to err on the side of not quite as much versus a whole lot of it. Or what if you wanted like a selenium type look, more of a blue. So we could come down into here and just add that little selenium look to that or give it a little bit more, depending what your vision is. And then, of course, you can also do some split toning. So let me go ahead. If you click right here, you can reset this too. So say, for instance, we'll click on the shadows. And what if I want to add a little bit of blue into my shadows? Something like that. I'll, I'll over exaggerate a little bit here, but of course you could always go less. Or let's say we want to put some sepia up into the highlights. So let's click on the highlights and let's make our highlights a little more on the yellow side somewhere. I don't know, somewhere right around in there. Okay. And we could even come to the midtones and add just maybe a tiny bit of sepia in the midtones like that. So here's the before and here is the after. So there's a lot you can do here and we could go ahead and reset this so you can 
do some split toning here or just tone. I like just to go to mid-tones and sometimes add just a little bit of sepia look, something like that. I think that looks really cool. So there you go. There's some ideas for the end of your edit just to finish it off if you want to split tone it or whatever. Or, or just alter the mood a little bit working with uh, shadows, midtones, and highlights. And don't forget, along with the color toning, we can also work with shadows, midtones, and highlights. I'm on midtones now, and maybe I'll just want to pull those midtones back just a little wee bit like that. So you could work with color as well as working with the shadows, midtones, and highlights, and either lighten or darken them down. So this is where you can really experiment at the end of the edit and just, you know, tweak it and get it to look just the way you want it to look. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and reset this. In fact, I'll just go ahead and delete this layer by clicking on this trash can. And now I'm back to my straightforward black and white image. And now one more time. Here is the before. Here's where I started. And here is the after. Well, there you go, everyone. That was Mystery and Monochrome. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, please give it a like, share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe. Click the bell notification icon, and then you'll get notified every time I upload a new tutorial. Well, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today on the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and I will see you all right here next time. But until then, Happy editing!